Welcome to our Mothering Day Sunday family service. Today we give thanks for the love and nurture of mothers, but we also think of all those who play any kind of mothering role in our lives, whether extended family members, siblings, aunties, grandparents, or those in the wider community, teachers, nurses, all those who care for others. And we think about and thank all those who care for us. It's also a time to celebrate our church family, where we are all united together as brothers and sisters in Christ, with God as our perfect heavenly parent. During this service, we're going to hear from some people in our community who contribute to caring for all of humanity. They are going to give us a glimpse of what it means to be a carer in their setting, how they think that this impacts the people they care for, and what they feel about the caring role they play in the lives of others. So sitting outside St Andrews with these beautiful daff daffodils surrounding me, let's join together and begin our worship with prayer. Loving God, we thank you for mothers and carers everywhere and for all they do to help our families grow well. We thank you too for our church family, where we can care for each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. And most of all, we thank you, Lord, that you are our heavenly parent who loves us and helps all families grow well. Amen. was thinking about mothering and caring, I asked the children what their parents or carers meant for them. 
So I'm going to share some of their comments with you that they responded with. Why do you think people care for each other? When you do nice things to someone else, they normally do the same back and it makes you feel good. And also instinct to love and care for one another. Good, thank you Samuel. And what makes you feel cared for? When you kiss me, back massage, when you cuddle me, when you compliment me and playing together. Our Bible reading today comes from the book, a book of the Old Testament, a book called Exodus, and it describes the way a very special baby is cared for. And the Open the Book team are going to do it for us now. Joseph's father and 11 brothers came to live with him in Egypt so that they could have enough food to eat. Those brothers married and had many children. Those children had children and so on until there were thousands of Israelites in Egypt. The king of Egypt, who was called the Pharaoh, did not like this at all. He made them work as slaves for him. Many of them worked hard, making bricks to build houses and palaces. Meanwhile, there was a basket in the water. There was a baby in the basket. The baby's big sister was watching from the riverbank. And God was watching too. Why was the basket in the water? Why was the baby in the basket? Because the baby was a Hebrew, a great, great, great grandson of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. There are too many of these Israelites in Egypt. The king said to his soldiers, If we are not careful, there will soon be more of them than of us. So, I want you to go and kill every baby Hebrew boy. Some Hebrew mothers cried. Some Hebrew mothers but this baby's mother was clever. She covered a basket with tar so it would not sink. She laid her baby in the basket and prayed that he would be quiet. And she hid the basket in the reeds near the river bank and hoped no one would notice. But someone did, and not just any someone, the daughter of the king himself. She went to the river to bathe. She spotted the basket boat. She sent her servant to fetch it out. And when the, she looked into it, oh, what a surprise! <laughs> I don't care if it is a Hebrew baby, the king's daughter announced. I want to keep him. Oh, kuchiku, I shall call him Moses. But I will need a serving woman to feed him and look after him. And that's 
when God nudged the baby's big sister just enough so she jumped up from where she'd been hiding. A serving woman, she shouted almost before she thought. I know a serving woman who can help you. Well, then, oh, sorry. Then fetch her, girl. commanded the princess, and God just smiled, for now little Moses would be raised by his own mother, taught the Hebrew ways, and be ready for that day when God would use him to set his people free. I'd like to tell you a short story about our son, William. One day, my husband Peter's telephone rang while William was in South Africa. He was working for a charity that helped disadvantaged children to learn how to surf. Well, someone has to do it. A telephone number that Peter didn't recognise appeared on his phone. It was our son ringing to say that he'd been in Port Elizabeth for a carnival and someone had asked to look at his phone and then snatched it out of his hand and ran off. William was very shocked, but he was being looked after by a family who had witnessed a naive Englishman have his phone stolen. My mothering instincts stepped right in. I wanted to help and protect him and I had to restrain myself from becoming over-involved and leave it to this kind but unknown, unknown family to deal with. When we listen to that story of Moses in the bulrushes, we witness a kind of mothering craziness. Moses's mother, through her mothering instincts, had to care and love her child, took the risk of defying Pharaoh 
of hiding Moses for as long as she possibly could. And then she took the extraordinary step of making a watertight basket and releasing him onto the Nile. Moses' mother took a huge risk with her son. Letting him go must have been heart-wrenching. But the person that interests me most in this story is Miriam. She saw what her mother was doing and she didn't try to stop her. She knew the risk for Moses, but she did something extremely beautiful and something that many of us, including me, find very difficult to do. She just watched. She watched Moses drift down the Nile and she watched again. I do wonder if she prayed. I think she would have done. Maybe she was having a deep conversation with God about the safety of Moses. But she didn't rush to forward to take him out of this craziness, this dangerous water, even though that instinct must have been very strong. She continued to watch Moses. Well, we know what happened. Pharaoh's daughter was at the river to bathe. She spotted Moses' basket and she rescued him and peered inside. She was faced with a Hebrew boy, a boy, someone her father had said should be drowned. But the sight of the infant unlocked something in her heart and instead of casting him adrift, instead of drowning him on the spot, she decided to care for him. So this little infant that through these different people experience great love from them in differing ways, all of which helped to care and to shape him as he grew. When Peter and I received that call from William in South Africa, all I wanted to do was to make it better for William. I was his mother and that made me feel as if I should be the one to help and comfort him, but I couldn't. I had to rely on another family who stepped in to help. They saw his distress and came to his aid. It's these kinds of actions that help shape us as humans. People who have a lot of kindness and love in their lives will want to emulate that with others. It's why as a body of Christ, we must support and love all those we know because that will then shape the next generation with that same desire. As we hear the stories from the people in our community, let us rejoice and give thanks that we and all the people here have the opportunity to grow, to be cared for and to be loved in this place. And when we, like Pharaoh's daughter, have our hearts moved by love, remember that God is love and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. Amen. Now we're going to hear from some people in our community who show their love and care for others. Hi there, I'm David. I'm Hannah. And uh, we are foster carers. We were approved in the summer of 2020 and this video is just to give you a glimpse of what it means to be a carer in our setting. So for us, this means looking after a wonderful teenage girl alongside our young boys. Um, and that looks like all the normal things that you'd expect with parenting, uh, but with a particular focus on our girl's emotional well-being, helping her to feel seen and safe. We're still very new to fostering. We've got lots more to learn, but thankfully there's lots of training and resources available to foster carers. Yeah, foster carers try to do something called therapeutic parenting, which is a way of parenting that helps look beyond um, behaviours to understand what's really going on for the child. Um, sadly, as I'm sure you'll know, kids in care have had a tough time um, and, and uh, that trauma um, affects kids in all sorts of different ways. And our job is to try and understand their experience, to build and hold on to connection with them even and especially in those trickiest moments um, and to help them feel less alone. So we try to respond um, to our kids with PACE, which stands for P playfulness, acceptance, curiosity and empathy. 
Um, and this approach has been so useful um, and helpful for us to learn not only in how we relate to our foster daughter, but also our boys and each other. Um, we don't get it right all the time, but it's what we aim for. So how do we think that this impacts the kids that we care for? I think everyone wants to feel loved and understood, to feel like people see them um, and see the good in them and to have a sense that they belong and matter. And that's everything that we want for our girl. We've seen a huge change in the six months that she's been with us, which has been a joy. Partly that's been how she relates to others, but I think crucially as well, how she views herself. Yeah, you, you can't fix everything um, and heal all the trauma, but it does feel like the little everyday things that happen in most families, you often take for granted. Um, but those things that we now get to share with our girl, those things are powerful um, and we can see them making a difference, uh, which is really motivating and exciting. And so how do we feel about being foster carers? We love it. Um, it genuinely feels like such a privilege. Um, it is a roller coaster at times. There are definitely challenges that come with it. It's full on, it's stretching, it's demanding. Um, but our foster daughter is amazing uh, and we all adore her. She feels like part of our family and it just feels natural to want to care for her as we do for our own kids. Yeah. Yeah, we feel like we are having to adapt and learn and change, but in really good ways. <laughs> and it, yeah, it feels important, but it's also a lot of fun. We'd recommend it. <laughs> Hello, I'm Rani B, and looking after Jago uh, means I haven't learned my lines. As a grandparent involved in childcare, it's a big commitment and responsibility. A major priority for us, but also a huge privilege. It means being really busy, life full on. Looking after a toddler means personal care, entertainment, play, and of course, safety. We try to vary the activities to make each day interesting and fun. We are fortunate that Jago finds everything interesting. He's really alert and curious. We do activities to reinforce language acquisition, motor skills, coordination and Jago has our full attention even when he's at play to ensure personal safety. Recently we've been doing up and down and on and off, up and parts of the body and of course walking. His learning journey is at times uh, quite hilarious as he experiments, pushes boundaries, has challenges with perseverance, um, and then finally accomplishes his goal. Always growing in confidence. Being a granny is a lot about thinking of what Jago's needs are, and then accommodating those and putting things into place for him. Um, it's also being respectful of what his parents' wishes and his parents' boundaries are. Really, it's about teamwork. As grandparents, we offer some wisdom, experience, and quite a lot of patience. But we celebrate every milestone for him and with him. We share our traditions, our values, and our beliefs. I guess we bear witness to a family that is past and present. Our unconditional love expresses the love that exists beyond time and space. For us, Jago represents the future and hope. Caring for Jago is a great joy. He's created a new dimension in our family life. We're really grateful to be trusted by his parents as being part of the process. With this new family, uh, watching them thrive and grow together. Both Tom and Hilary are grateful for what we do and express that. We have a shared caring experience. It's definitely brought us closer and we have much shared laughter and joy and a refreshed mutual respect and love because we're all interested in the future. Hello, my name's Nick Webster and I'm the head teacher at Wesley Infants and Backwell Juniors. And uh, I care for lots of people in my role. Um, obviously, the children are at the very centre of everything that we do. 
uh, and their well-being and um, their learning is obviously a core focus for us. Um, and particularly at the moment, through these uh, challenging times, the children have been, uh, some of them have been in school, but a lot of the children have been at home as well. So our role has very much been um, looking after their um, mental health, um, looking after their well-being, while alongside that, um, maintaining as much of their uh, learning in the curriculum as possible. So that's been a real challenge and um, you know, the care that we would normally be giving the children when they're all in school. Obviously, we've not been able to do that as much um, or as easily while they've been at home. So using technology, we've uh, kept in contact with the children and um, made sure that we've engaged uh, as much as possible with them to make sure that they're um, learning and developing um, at home and in school. Um, and that's been something that we've had as a real focus uh, and myself as head teacher. Um, that's been something that we've been, you know, I've been acutely aware of um, over the last few months, particularly. Um, but I also uh, care and try to care as much as possible, obviously, for the, the wider community and the, the staff are a huge part of that. Um, so the workload of the staff, um, the effort that they're putting into everything they're doing is huge and they, they do a fantastic job. Um, so in my role, you know, we need to be aware of the impact of, um, of workload and um, various things that we're asking staff to do uh, and making sure that we're not overburdening them because the children's well-being has been hugely important but so has um, and um, making sure that we're not impacting too heavily upon that um, but also on parents as well because um, during this last lockdown phase um, this has been a real challenge for parents at home doing homeschooling so um, caring for their well-being as much as possible by offering support and um, We've offered places to some children in school who have perhaps been struggling at home for various reasons. So um, that caring role covers lots and lots of different people. Um, and as head teacher, I take it very, very uh, seriously. It's a hugely uh, important position um, and one that I feel very privileged to, to have. So um, the care of all of those individual uh, groups of people are hugely important to me. Uh, and I feel very lucky to have the, the, the team around me to help me to, to look after all of them. Hi, my name's Jen and I'm a nurse. I work on the nurse bank at the BRI hospital and I work in a variety of settings. So I work in recovery, waking up patients from their operation. I work in general intensive care, caring for patients who are in multi-organ failure. And more recently, I've been looking after, well, not looking after, but vaccinating um, staff for COVID. So um, my job is quite varied, which I love. Um, some days I'm having to help give patients a wash and get them out of bed and um, helping them to feed and, and looking after all their practical physical needs. Um, but also equally looking after uh, their mental well-being as well, encouraging them to do their best to, um, to see the progress that they're making and um, encourage them and their families, um, especially at the moment where families haven't been able to visit. It's really important that we have really good communication with them and help them feel as involved as they can be. Um, sometimes we send them pictures to show how patients are doing and, um, yeah, to encourage both the patient and the families that they're doing well. Um, uh, so yeah, my job involves looking after the practical things, but also trying to support um, the mental health side of things as well. Um, I love what I do. I love being a nurse. I think it's a real privilege and um, yeah, I feel very lucky to be able to do what I do. It's, it's great. And I love the variety of people that we meet and um, just being able to, yeah, help others help them get better and just support them in their journey while they're in hospital and yeah so it's, it's a real really great job um and i hope that i have a positive impact i hope i brighten people's day and um just encourage them while they're in hospital particularly while they can't see family and friends um but yeah it's a great job i love it <laughs> My name's Marion Evans and I'm a volunteer and coordinator with the Backwell Parish Council Resilience Group and I'm a volunteer responder with the Royal Voluntary Service. Um, the Resilience Group reaches out to people in the village who may be vulnerable and shielding 
or isolating due to COVID or even feeling isolated and lonely or, or otherwise in need of support. Uh, when I receive a request for help, I pair the person who needs the help with one of our volunteers who can offer support with shopping, prescription collections or even just to provide conversation and friendship. Um, this could be a single event or a long-term support and we're blessed to have a large pool of wonderful volunteers in Backwell who are willing to help. As a Royal Voluntary Service responder, I'm alerted through a phone app that the person in a local area needs help and then I make contact with them um, personally for a single support task. How do I think this impacts the people that I care for? we care for because we are a group in the village. Well in my experience the people that are cared for are very grateful for the material support so the shopping or the prescription delivery that they've received um, as this has often been a source of anxiety for them. In addition the visit by the volunteer or the phone call has often been described as the highlight of their day at a time when they perhaps haven't seen anybody in person or even spoken to anybody else for days. Um, last week I delivered a prescription to an older couple in Nailsey and I decided to retreat to a safe distance several metres away and I removed my mask at that point and the recipient actually told me she was delighted to see a real face at last and that it had made her smile. A small gesture of care can make a huge difference. And what do I feel about the caring role that I play in the life of others? Well, these caring roles have actually fulfilled a need in me, particularly over the past year. Um, many of us confined to home and taken away from other roles in our lives need to feel useful to others still. Caring for others has helped reduce the anxiety that I've felt about others in the community and about how they're coping or not coping. I've met other people who are struggling with health or mobility issues or are lonely or afraid and it certainly allowed me to put my own experience of missing family and friends well into perspective. Today, the response to loving God is hear our prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, we are all members of your family, all children of one God. Father, on this Mothering Sunday, we thank you for all mothers and grandparents, and especially our own, for their care and patience and love, for the prayers they offer, the advice they give, and the example they set. We pray also for those who foster children, for the comfort and care they provide, and the security they give. Thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus, you called us to be a caring church, reflecting in our lives your infinite care for us, your children. Help us to fulfil our calling and to care for one another in an unselfish and loving way, and to care for the world around us. Father, we pray for your world, remembering all the places where there is war and trouble. We pray for the people of Yemen, Syria, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Iran and Iraq. We give thanks for the work and care of the doctors and nurses who tend the injured and provide comfort for those in distress. Loving God, hear our prayer. In our daily life, Help us never to forget the power of love. May love motivate our care for our neighbourhoods and those around us. We remember all those who are lonely or living on their own. Thank you for those who have stepped forward to provide support and help in these difficult times and those who coordinate these groups. Father, we pray for your protection for all those pupils returning to school this week and we pray for their teachers and classroom assistants. We thank you for their care and dedication and the support 
they have given to the pupils and their families during the period of lockdown. Father, give them strength and the patience they need. Loving God, hear our prayer. We bring before you, Lord, all those who are sick or in trouble and those who care for them. In the time of quiet, we think for, of anyone known to us who is sick or in need of our prayers. Give them courage and hope in their troubles. We also give thanks for those who work in the NHS and care homes, who have put their lives at risk to care for those in hospital with coronavirus and other illnesses. Protect them from this virus and give them the strength and compassion they need. We also remember those who have died recently. Janet Briggs According to your promises, grant us with them the joy of your salvation. Loving God, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the Queen and the Royal Family and for Meghan and Harry at this difficult time. We ask that there will be reconciliation and understanding so that peace and harmony may be restored to them all. Loving God, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Finally, we bring together all our prayers by saying together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Closing prayer. Mother in God, you watch your children grow. And you let us go. Mother in God, you teach us what is true. And you let us go. Mother in God, you show us what is just. And you let us go. Mother in God, 
you give us just what we need. And you let us go. Amen. Amen. And so as we go out into the world, we ask for God's blessing upon ourselves and all those we know. And we say together, God, go with you into this day. Jesus Christ, walk before you, and the Spirit be a cloud of love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with all whom you love and care for this day and always. Amen. Thank you.